All right, let's talk about creating our own linear equations when we're given situations. As you know, we do this a lot in eighth grade. You learn something and then it gets a little bit harder and a little bit harder and then all of a sudden you think you got it and then I'm like, boom, word problems. So this is gonna be the last standard that you are assessed on in this unit um, and it's being able to create your own linear equation and we will stick to y equals mx plus b form. Um, you know by now, hopefully, that that's slope-intercept form. Remember, that's easy to remember because the M is the slope and the B is the Y-intercept. So that's why we call it slope-intercept form. So I'm going to read number one to you. We're going to practice our annotation skills. We're going to do it together as an example. And then uh, we'll work through number two, and hopefully you can check your work with me as we go. So let me read the problem to you first. Suppose that the water level of a river is 34 feet and that it is receding at a rate of 0.5 foot per day, which is half of a foot per day. Write an equation for the water level, so we're going to use a capital L, after D days, so a lowercase d for the number of days. And then we're going to answer, in how many days will the water level be 26 feet? So let's read it again, and this time let's underline things that are important circle words we don't know, and highlight the final question. So I'm thinking again as I go through, suppose the water level of a river is 34 feet. I'm thinking that's going to be important. The water level is already 34 feet. It recedes. I'm not really sure what that word recedes means. So I'm going to circle it. It's receding at a rate of 0 0.5, like half of a foot per day. Pretty sure that's going to be important, so I'm going to underline that. We need to write an equation for the water level, and then our, find, our final question, sorry, is in how many days will the water level be 26 feet? Okay, so first I'll tell you, since I'm so, so, so smart, I know receding means uh, like digressing or going down. So think about the word proceed, like go on or go forward. Reseed kind of means go backward, go back, go down. So I'm going to remember that the word reseeding means to go down or to go back. So if it is receding at a rate of a half a foot per day, do you think the water level of the river is increasing or decreasing? Yeah, it's decreasing. Okay, so then I'm going to notice these words per day. So remember, in slope-intercept form, we have a slope or a rate of change, and then we have an intercept or an initial value. So if we know that the water is decreasing by half of a foot per day, I'm going to go ahead and associate that with my rate of change. This represents a rate, right? It's an amount per day. So I know that my M is going to be negative 0.5, right? We're going down a half of a foot every day. That should say foot. Now let's think of our initial value. Our initial value must be that 34 feet, right? That's where our river starts. So if it starts at 34 feet, I don't know why my stylist doesn't want to work with me today. And then I'm losing a half of a foot every day. Our equation would be y equals mx plus b. Okay, instead of using y and x, we're going to use l and d. Because in the problem, it tells us to use l and d. So instead of writing y, I'm going to write L because this gives us our overall water level. And instead of writing x, I'm going to write D because that's our number of days. Our final question was, how many days will the water level be 26 feet? So let me erase this, make myself some room. So in how many days, so we're looking for D, will the water level be 26 feet? So I'm going to plug in 26 for y or for L in this case. That's a negative. My stylus really does not want to work today. So now we just need to solve, right? And we're solving for D. We've done this 100,000 times. So subtract 34 first, right? 26 take away 34 is eight. If eight equals negative one half D, I need to get the D all by itself, so I'm going to do 8. Oh, that's a negative 8. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 26 take away 34 is a negative 8. I'm going to do negative 8 divided by negative 0 
and I get 16. So D equals 16. So that means that after 16 days, the water level will have decreased from 34 feet down to 26 feet. So let me put days right here, just so we know what we're talking about. So here's our equation that we wrote all by ourselves. And then here is the number of days that it will take for the water level to be 26 feet. Let's look at the next one. Seth's father is thinking of buying his son a six month movie pass for $40. With the pass, matinees cost a dollar. If matinees are normally $3.50 each, how many times must Seth attend in order for it to benefit his father to buy the pass? Okay, so let's think through this problem and use our annotation strategies. Remember, we're underlining things that are important, we're circling words we don't know, and we're highlighting the final question. So Seth's father is thinking of buying his son a six-month movie pass for $40. So I'm thinking it's probably important that it's $40, and maybe the six months has something to do with it. With the pass, matinees cost a dollar. I'm not really sure what this word means, so I'm going to circle it, but I am thinking that that $1 cost is important. There's that word again. If matinees are normally $3.50, how many times must Seth attend in order for it to benefit his father to buy the pass? And that must be my final question. Oops. So let's see. How many times must Seth attend in order for it to benefit his father to buy the pass. Okay, so let's think this one through. We know that we're writing a linear equation. So we know that we're thinking about rate of change. We're thinking about initial value. Okay, so first of all, let me tell you that the word matinee just means an afternoon movie. So we know it's really popular to go see movies at night, like at seven or eight o'clock at night. If you go to a matinee, which is at like four, typically you can save money on your movie ticket. And we just call that time of day um, a matinee, a movie that is showing in the afternoon. So dad is gonna spend $40 on the pass. He will get his matinee ticket for a dollar if he has the pass with him. Normally matinees are $3.50 each. So how many times does he need to attend in order for it to benefit his father to buy, to buy the pass? Okay, so if he, uses his mat his matinee pass or his pass every time he gets his matinees for a dollar so he's saving how much money let's think about how much he is saving if it's usually i really don't know why my stylus isn't working today if it's usually 350 but instead he only pays a dollar he is saving two dollars and fifty cents every time he uses his pass to go to the movies right So if we've already paid out $40, like we're at a negative $40, how, much, how many times does he need to go see a matinee? How many times does he need to save that $2.50 to earn back that $40? So I'm going to do 40 divided by 250. That is 16. So if he attends 16 times, they'll break even. So let me erase this and go back over here. If Seth sees a matinee movie with his pass 16 times, he will break even. But we want it to benefit his father, right? So that means he needs to attend 17 times or see 17 movies in order to benefit his father. If he sees 16, he just breaks even, right? So let's write the equation. Let me write oops, y equals... You told me he was saving $2.50 every time he goes to see a matinee. And then we're already in the whole $40 because we've already spent $40. So if we plug in 16 for X, 250 times 16 is 40. Take away that $40 we already spent. And that's giving us zero. So he needs to see 17 movies for it to actually benefit his father. The question didn't say how many movies does he need to go see in order to break even. So he'll need to see the 17th matinee in order for it to be beneficial. Okay, so I'm going to let you try this one on your own, and then we'll check your work. For babysitting, Nicole charges the flat fee of $3 and then $5 per hour. Write an equation for the cost, which we're going to use a big capital C, after H hours of babysitting. What do you think the slope and the y-intercept represent? 
how much money will she make if she babysits for five hours? So I'm going to read it again and let's underline, circle, and highlight together, and then I'll let you try it on your own. Okay, so Nicole is charging a flat fee of $3 and then $5 per hour. We need an equation, and then here's our question that says, what do you think the slope and the y-intercept represent? And then also, how much money will she make if she babysits for five hours? I don't think there's any, I don't think there are any questions, I mean, words in the question that you don't understand. Um, maybe you want to remember that equation means it has an equal sign, right? A mathematical um, relationship with an equal sign. So let's think about flat fee and then per hour. Which one do you think is the slope and which one do you think is the y-intercept? Yeah, so the one-time fee of $3 is going to be our y-intercept. That's going to be our B. And then if it's $5 per hour, that's going to be our slope or our rate of change. It's an amount of money per hour. So our equation is going to be C equals 5H plus 3. And I went ahead and used the variables it told me to use instead of Y and X. So here's our equation. C equals 5H plus 3. You make that C a little bit bigger. Okay, so how much money will she make if she babysits for five hours? So if five hours is the amount of time, we need to plug in five for the H, right? Because H represents the number of hours. So we're going to find out how much she makes if she babysits for five hours. So let's plug in a five. Five times five is 25 plus three is 28. So she will make $28 if she babysits for 